Let's also bring you the kind of uh, losses that uh, Russia is facing at this point of time on your screens right now. Um, you've got 28 uh, days that the war has been on. In terms of personnel, Russia has lost 15,300 of their personnel in this war, 500 and nine tanks also lost. Uh, let's get you the APV figure also on your screens. Uh, 1,556, 252 artillery. In terms of aircrafts, let's get you what the losses have been like. 99 and uh, uh, 123 helicopters. As far as Soviet have gone, war duration is concerned, 10 years uh, it went on. Uh, 15,051 personnel lost their lives. 385 tanks. 1,314 uh, uh, APVs, 433 artilleries, 118 aircrafts and 400 helicopters. These are the claims that have been made by Ukrainian government. Six rounds of peace talks have taken place between Russia and Ukraine, but there is no sign of a breakthrough as yet. Zelensky has again asked Putin for direct talks to end the conflict, but Putin shows no signs of backing down. The world is now holding its breath and asking, when and how will this war really end? Take a look at this report. Land. Twenty-eight days and counting. Millions have fled their homes. The human cost continues to mount. The economy is flattened. But there are no signs of an end to this war. After six rounds of peace talks, a breakthrough still eludes Russia and Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has once again called for direct talks with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin. Russia has rejected Zelensky's demand right away. Moscow says the president-level talks can happen only after the two sides agree on a deal. With regards to the internal Ukrainian dialogue, it's upon Ukraine now, after our operation in Ukraine ends. I hope it ends with the signing of a comprehensive agreement on security issues, that is Ukraine's neutral status with the guarantees of its security. Much will also depend on where the U.S. stands. American President Joe Biden is traveling to Poland this week. President Biden will not be visiting Ukraine despite request by Kyiv. President Zelensky is making no bones about his disappointment with his Western allies. While Ukraine is putting up a fierce fight despite relentless Russian bombardment, the question is how long they can do that? This is one war neither side seems to have an endgame. Bureau Report, India Today. As Russian forces continue to rain missiles on key Ukrainian cities, U.S. President Joe Biden will travel to Poland at the end of the week. What does Biden's visit to NATO member Poland mean amidst the raging Ukraine-Russia war? And what is the message that the United States of American, uh, America President Joe Biden is trying to send out? Our next report will give you all these answers. He's about to mark a month of his invasion of Ukraine. He's about to mark a month of rapid-fire sanctions against Russia. And he's about to mark a month of warning the international community about World War III. In just hours from now, these three leaders will be on the same landmass. After his vice president failed to cut any ice in Poland last week, US President Biden will be in Ukraine's neighboring country this week. The visit comes amidst weeks of suspense over whether Ukraine's NATO neighbors will help stop Putin's war machine. Oh, I, I, I think he is a war criminal. 
Now, in the Ukrainian land, our soldiers and officers are fighting for Russia, for a peaceful life, for the people of Donbass to denazify and demilitarize Ukraine so that no anti-Russia that has been created by the West next to our borders didn't threaten us. With nuclear weapons as well as it was happening recently, our people is proud of. U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to Poland comes at a time when Ukraine's President Zelensky has increasingly felt more disenchanted and betrayed by both the United States and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries. And this in disenchantment he has openly expressed in more ways than one and now on more occasions than one. Robite Ukraina щоб стати членом НАТО, бути в безпеці, отримати гарантії безпеки. Ми чули відповідь Рішення такого на столі поки що немає і найближчим часом не буде, як і крісла для нас за цим столом. Between the belligerence of Putin and the self-righteous counter-strikes by Biden, Europe is taking on a terrifying post-war hue. Devastation in big cities, talk of battle in the air, nuclear forces on operational alert, Night skies lit up by explosions. Weapons by the ton flowing across international borders. And the hustle and bustle of superpower leaders with no real plan on stopping the actual violence. Can Biden provide clarity on what happens next? With Gaurav Savant in Poland and Gita Mohan in Moscow, Bureau Report, India Today.